Hello, Lala. Hi. How are you? Comment vas-tu? First question. Première you question. Dans Kang Out, Out of Luck, tu chantes I was born bad. Tu étais une adolescente difficile? I was a sort of difficult kid. I think I thought I was a grown up when I was very young. But um yeah, I wasn't that bad. Chez tes parents, vous écoutiez beaucoup de musique? Et quel style? When I was little, like I mean, we sang a lot when I was young, but it was mostly like with my grandma playing her music to us. And um And then when I got into high school, I started to find cool music. And then it really wasn't until I got into college that I found music that I really loved, like Frank Sinatra and Bob Dylan, Nirvana, the people that inspired me musically. And um, tu as fait partie d'une chorale. In a choir, yeah. What made? C'est ce qui t'a donné envie de chanter? Singer? Mm, no, I think. I sang in the choir because I liked to sing, and um, I just knew, I don't know, it was just one, I also sang in, um, in school, and sang anywhere I could when I was little, so, just wherever I could. Um, you took Ensuite, tu as participé à des open mic à New York. Uh, what did you Pourquoi? When or why? Why, why? Why. Um, well, I planned to go to New York to... Just start singing, really, and um, I didn't really know how to start, so I just typed into the computer, how do you start singing, and they it came up with open mic nights, and so I started, in, I just brought my guitar down to Brooklyn and started singing there. You have signed your first deal with Five Point Records. How did it happen? After... Like after I did a couple of open mic nights, I entered a songwriting competition in Brooklyn, and um, I didn't win. But one of the judges on the panel was named Van Wilson, and he was an A and R man for that in, um, independent record label. And so he brought me to the label and introduced me to everyone. And I didn't sign with them until about ten months later. Um, well, that's how that happened. <laughs> the first, le premier producteur avec lequel tu as travaillé, c'est Richard Kane, connu pour son travail avec The Strokes ou Paul McCartney. Yeah. Ça t'a ouvert les yeux pour la suite? Well, I think I thought things were going to sort of go, um, like I think I thought that things were going to get easier from there because I was working with David and we really liked each other. And he really understood um, the kind of music that I wanted to make. Um, but after we finished the record, which took a long time, um, it was shelved by my label for two and a half years. So it kind of it put a stop on what I was sort of planning to do, the, the way that I was planning to progress. So, yeah. C'est cette mauvaise expérience qui t'a donné envie de changer de nom. Lisa Grant est devenue Lana Del Rey. No, because I released that record under Lana Del Rey. Yeah, I was not sure. J'étais pas sûr parce que les deux noms figurent sur la pochette. Yeah. No, I mean, um, I think when I started singing and then started to make my videos, I always knew that I was. I considered what I was doing to be an art project, and I just wanted a name for. Um, a name that was as beautiful as I hoped the music I would make would become. And I just thought it sounded pretty coming off the tip of the tongue. And, um, no, um, it had been... And Lana Del Rey sound... Et Lana Del Rey, ça sonne un peu comme Elvis Presley, non? Do you think so? Yes. Yeah, oh, il y a des similitudes. Sorry, Elvis Presley, maybe. Uh, about that, I've... À ce sujet-là, j'ai un petit cadeau pour toi. Yes. You got me a present. You can slide it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's so cool. This is my favorite Elvis song. D'où ma prochaine question. <laughs> Pour toi, Elvis est le symbole de la perfection? Mm, no, I don't think so. But 
The first time I saw him, I did. Um, I was like very struck by him. I thought he was m very otherworldly. Um, but I mean, I think the first thing I thought about him was just that he was so beautiful. Yeah. And then the, s the second thing was just that I, I loved his voice, and I yes. couldn't believe anyone could sing like that. Um, but I don't know about a model of perfection. <laughs> Quand as-tu composé cette chanson Video Games I think about 11 months ago now. Yeah. Um, comment t'es venue l'idée de faire tes propres vidéos, très do it yourself, et d'y apposer ta marque de fabrique Your special trademark. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it um, Well, it sort of became inadvertently my little trademark, but. It wasn't really something I planned on using as um, as making my thing. Like, you know, I always hoped that I would have help sort of creating the visual part of what I was doing. But when I was younger, it was just really difficult to find the right people to get on board and who had the same ideas and inspirations as I did visually. So. You know, three weeks ago, I made my first video with like a proper director, Yoan Lemoyne, and um, I wrote the treatment, and he adapted it, and you know, we had a big team working with us, and that was what I always wanted. Yeah. Um, I always wanted to have help, so I think that video for Born to Die is the best thing I've ever done. But um, when I, st I started making videos when I was 17 and just putting them up on YouTube. And initially, I was just putting together um, clips of things I thought were beautiful and setting them to classical music. And then I eventually started setting them to my music. And then I eventually started splicing myself in. <laughs> so. Le succès de cette chanson est incroyable. Elle dure cinq minutes. C'est un des hits les plus longs, je crois, non <laughs> It is rare. <laughs> well, I think, you know, you get to a point when you really, when you've been writing for a really long time, you end up very much just writing for yourself and writing what you want to hear. And so, to me, it wasn't a problem that it was a long song. Well, we didn't expect it to go to radio or television or anything like that. So, it's nice for someone like me because it, It also happens to be one of my favorite songs. C'est so. une super chanson. Thank you. <laughs> And is it true that that Est-il vrai que cette chanson t'a été inspirée par une déchireur amoureuse avec un bad boy? Well, I mean, no. I mean, it was more inspired like usually when I sit down to write, I just I like start to think about the way things used to be. Just because the only thing we have to reflect upon are our memories. So I usually think about the best of the past. I know it has sort of a sad tone in the song, but when I was writing it, I was actually thinking about what a nice time it was um, because things were pretty simple. And he had a nice job. He'd come home, he'd watch video games, and I'd sit there and I'd write my songs. It was a nice time for me when I wasn't struggling and I was like very much at peace with myself and didn't have You know, I was. Do I had already done everything I wanted to do, so I, I liked it. <laughs> okay, let's talk. About Parlons de l'album maintenant. Pourquoi ce titre? Well, I didn't know what the title was going to be, and then it kind of emerged from my favorite track, called "Born to Die," and so, like, slowly it became a good title for the entire album because the song, just the energy of the song, embodies. Like the message I kind of felt was right for the entire um, album, and especially after I made the video, I was really sure that it was it was the perfect direction to go in completely. But um, it's not it's not really as like sad as it sounds. It's more just about I don't know. Even in the midst of knowing you're mortal, just finding happiness in true love. Il y a aussi un peu de France dans cet album, car Johan Lemoine a fait le clip de Born to Die. Pourquoi lui 
Who, Yoan? Yeah. Why Yoan? Yeah. Well, first of all, um, France was a place that was sort of on my mind in terms of being inspirational. It was just somewhere that seemed romantic to me and that I always wanted to go to, so I wanted a French director. And also, he reached out to me first, and when I heard his music, I really resonated with it. Like, I felt like we were cut from the same cloth. Like, I could tell we had the same inspirations, and we had, like, we both wanted to keep our, a lot of integrity with, like, the music and the art we made. Except he's actually good at making videos. <laughs> So he was just the, he's, he was the right person right away. I knew that, and everyone I suggested it to really was, felt really strongly about him. J'ai été surpris par ce mélange de classique et de grosse rythmique. Uh, D'où vient ton amour pour le hip-hop? My love of hip-hop. Um, I think just when I was younger and I started listening to like different rappers, different MCs. I had no idea that like music could be so autobiographical and still be popular. So um, that was a revelation for me. And I just liked the idea of people talking about their lives in a song. So it made me feel all right with doing the same thing, obviously in a very different style. <laughs> Qu'est-ce qui t'inspire le plus pour écrire? I mean, I guess my biggest inspiration is just sort of my own life. Um, just the things that I've done, and then also just really inspired by beautiful things, just all things beautiful, more visually than musically. Um, I guess some of that has to do with old cinema. I, I like the look of old film. Um, lots of other things, like exotic places and... Magnetic people, things like that. Dans ton style, il y a plusieurs antinomies. Ce mélange classique et hip-hop, ces paroles un peu dingues chantées avec un visage d'ange, ça fait partie de ton écriture And then the things I sing about are sort of just exactly the way that things were mixed with um, a way that I wanted them to be. Um, I'm not like, um, I'm not controversial by nature. Yeah. Um, But you mélange des choses qui normalement ne se mélangent pas. In a normal way. Well, it's, it's probably getting more and more popular as the days go on, just because I'm... Um, You can hear so many different, so much different music. You have so much access to it. But, I mean, I definitely enjoy, like, lush cinematic st strings, and that's why we've been working with the Philadelphia Orchestra, with putting strings on, you know, the record. And but also, you know, I like the darkness that comes with heavier beats that, like, this hip-hop producer, Emil Haney, started working into the track. And, um... Yeah, I think it gives it a good mix of like beauty um, and darkness. But after the good mix, Et après un bon mix, il te faut de bonnes mélodies. Incredible about melodies. Thank you. Et tu assez fort pour ça. Where Comment ça vient? Where did they come from? Well, they do, they don't come that often. Um, they don't come that often, but I know one when I sing it. And Usually the melodies just come with the words all yeah. intact. Sometimes it's it's mostly when I'm walking, and then sometimes if somebody plays me um, like a few chords that inspire me, I just start freestyling over that. <laughs> Impressionnant. Um, you are also also an incredible singer. You just need to prove it. Thank you. Um, Travailles-tu beaucoup ta voix ou tu préfères garder sa fragilité? Well, I mean, I've been trying to keep it strong. <laughs> um, you know, like we talked about before, it just depends on the day. I mean, I actually, 
I try and show like a really that I have a strong voice like and I try and be strong for my audience like I don't really find fragility to be appealing just because it's not something I've really been interested in for a long time but I am nervous on stage and um I you know every every show gets a little bit better uh, who the Qui a produit l'album um, this one yes there are three guys I've been working really closely with um, Justin Parker is from London and he's just putting the chords underneath and then um, Emil Haney is like a hip-hop producer he's put some beats and samples underneath um, like the record and then also working with Larry Gold and he's conducting the Philadelphia Orchestra and Daniel Heath who's a string composer so That's my group. That's my core group. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, en studio, es tu une, une obsédée du contrôle? Um, I don't really have to be a control freak because I know exactly what I'm doing. Like I'm really comfortable in the studio and um, it's really easy for me. And I don't. I would never work with a producer who was going to. Yeah. You, you know, it's just not my bag. Like yeah. who's going to steer something one way? I think people who I've worked with know that I do. Exactly what I want, and that's pretty much it. You know exactly what you want. I do. Yeah, you know exactly what you want. De toute façon. Sonically, I do. Uh, New York, New York is a ville. Ça a une influence sur l'album? Probably, because it it influenced your life. It influenced my life. I mean, it made me happy, and so it made it easy to write this record, since I enjoy writing when I'm happy. And, uh, video, video games a été reprise par plusieurs groupes, comme Casabian, Jamie Cullum, Tom Vec, Bombay Bicycle Club. Uh, tu les as écoutés? Um, I haven't actually heard them, except the radio DJ played me like 30 seconds of Bombay Bicycle Clubs. And it was good. It was good. Yeah, there is some. Il y en a qui sont vraiment très bonnes. And you know that this is my. Et c'est ma prochaine question. Those artists come from different backgrounds. Ces artistes viennent d'univers différents, mais la chanson tient. Do you know why? Tu sais pourquoi? Probably because it's a good song. Parce que c'est un classique. Yeah, I mean, you know, a good. Une bonne chanson restera toujours une bonne chanson. Yeah, I agree. Like, we all have our own taste, but I personally know when I hear a song that I love, you know. So. All right, this is my dernière uh, question. Last question. Lana Del Rey. Outsider. A rebel without a cause. The queen. Or a femme, or a femme fatale. I'm just a man amongst men. Just regular girl. <laughs> Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup thank you. et merci beaucoup pour cette version acoustique que tu nous offres maintenant.